When we think of ethics, we usually think in terms of rules and being ethical means following the rules and being unethical means, of course, you don't follow the rules. But this focus on rules, this focus on some sort of objective overlying uh, law that we must follow hides the very important fact that ethics is a process. A process, yes, of following some rules, but more importantly, a process of decision making. We have to make decisions about ethics, and as I mentioned in the previous lecture, the reality is, is that what is the correct ethical decision is not always easily understandable, it's not always black and white. So here we're going to briefly talk about the process of ethical decision making. And I will emphasize again and again, it's a process. And that's what we're talking about here. And so we can talk about it in terms of five simple steps, a, a, a step by step process of how you make ethical decisions. And we'll just quickly go through them here. Uh, the text gives you much more and better information, but it, it helps to kind of review and get an overview here. Uh, the first step, of course, is determine the facts. You're making decisions about something, and ethics is always related to things that are going on in the world, not just ideas floating out there in the ethers. So you need to determine the facts of the situation, what's really going on, and why is it going on the way that it is. If you don't know what's going on, you can't make a good decision. And yes, be aware of the fact that you as a subjective individual human being have a perspective, not the only perspective, but a perspective on the situation. Other people have different perspectives and you know what? They might have more knowledge and see things that you don't. So listen to other people. Two, identify what's going on in terms of the ethical issues. What are the facts of the situation? What are the facts of the ethics? Uh, we need to connect the rules of ethics, the ideas that are behind ethical rules, with what is going on here. And we, because we have this individual perspective that we have, we suffer from a certain myopia of not understanding what are all the ethical issues involved. Uh, we are so focused on the minutia of our experience that we don't see things that are outside of our experience. And of course, we just plain don't like change. And so here we have three examples of that. The myopia of, oh, there, either, there is no right or wrong here, or this issue doesn't apply here. Uh, intentional, uh, inattentional blindness, not intentional blindness, although that can be a problem too. Uh, we we kind of don't want to know, we don't want to be bothered, we just want to do our own thing. Uh, the old boiling the frog thing, uh, that's an old person's analogy there, I suspect. But the idea that if, if change is happening incrementally, we don't notice it. We need to be aware of what's really going on. Of course, always, always, always challenge our own perceptions and, and preconceptions of things. We need to uh, identify the stakeholders. That's a lovely business jargon, lingo, buzzword thing there, the stakeholders. A, a better way of thinking about it in real person language is, well, who's involved? Who is affected by what's going on? And in our decision point this week about, am I about to lose my job? Well, people who may be losing their jobs, they're the real stakeholders here. They have a stake in what's going on. Unfortunately, in business speak, usually stakeholders mean the investor class and people who have money or skin in the game. But people are also stakeholders because people are always also involved. And by people, I mean not just the people who have invested in the company or own the company, but the people who are the employees and the people who are the customers of a company. And so anyone who could potentially be affected by the decision that you need to make could be considered a stakeholder, should be considered a stakeholder. Four, consider available alternatives. Don't always just go with your first instinct. This is true for everything in life, not just business ethics. Think things through, think of possibilities, don't just follow the rules for the sake of it, and don't just go with your first Oh, I found a decision, I'll just go with that. No, think it through, take some time, and come to a good decision, not just a quick decision. Consider all the possible consequences of, of action A versus action B, weigh the alternatives, uh, and that's number five, 
uh, I, I, I think the book should just put four and five together because they're really closely the same here. Uh, you look at all the alternatives and you weigh which, what are the positives and negatives of all the alternatives. If you need to write them all down, if you need to, you know, storyboard them or you need to flow chart them, whatever you need to do, but consider who's involved, who's going to be affected, what are the, con the consequences going to be of these. And of course, you have to make a decision. You can't just keep punting it off saying, oh, I need to think about it more, I need to do more. A lot of times, we need to make a decision fairly quickly. But even if we don't need to make an immediate decision, we do eventually do need to make a decision. Now, one of the examples of this is something that we professors have had to deal with. Uh, this was really uh, more of an issue about 10 years ago when, when laptops were really starting to become ubiquitous. And of course, this being an online course is kind of a, uh, <laughs> a funny irony of this. Should I allow laptops in my online course? Mm, probably. But back in the day when laptops were first coming into the classroom around 2009, 2010, it was an issue, and I knew a lot of professors that would ban them, you know, completely ban them, uh, simply because they didn't know how to adapt to change. Now, uh, I always thought that uh, number one here is absolutely the case. They're helpful for taking notes. I can't stand handwriting. And I, as soon as I had a computer, I was taking notes on a computer. As soon as I had a laptop, bang, that was what I do. I have a tablet now that I carry with me everywhere incessantly because I use it to take notes rather than write things out. And he pieces of paper lying all over the place. Everything is electronic in my life. All of my music, all of my uh, everything is electronic for me. And if a student wants to do that, I don't see why we should say that they can't do that. Uh, uh, yeah, and yes, students learning, that's the whole process. I mentioned that in the introduction video, which some of you actually watched. Uh, the whole purpose of a college course is for students to learn. Obviously, the stakeholders involved, all of the students, and yes, to a lesser extent, really, me. Now, the question for me is, uh, for any professor, is if I ban laptops, does that cause more harm than good or more good than harm? If I allow laptops, does that cause more harm or more good? Who is affected by this? Are we punishing all students for the bad actions of some students? And yes, I became vividly aware very quickly when laptops started appearing in classrooms years ago that not everyone who had a laptop in my classroom was using them to take notes. When I see someone in the back of the room laughing at something on their screen and asking a friend, oh, hey, hey, look at this, look at this, I figure it has nothing to do with me and nothing to do with class. Yes, they're watching YouTube videos. Yes. Well, okay, that's bad. That's wrong. That's stupid. But guess what? That's going to show up in their bad grades. So they're punishing themselves. Why should I punish all the other students in class who are using their laptops to take notes and find resources to learn because some jerk in the back of the class is watching YouTube videos. So that's where we weigh the alternatives again, four and five should really be the same here. We need to address all of the issues involved and who are the people who are involved and who are going to be affected. Now, I didn't make this decision here. This is a, a slide that, that someone handed to me. Uh, laptops are banned unless a student has a disability. Well, that's just nonsense. That's far bot. Uh, no, uh, my personal opinion, and has always been, no, uh, let the laptops in the, in the class, and the students need to do what they need to do. And some students like to take paper notes. Some people like to type their notes into a computer. Either way is fine, whatever helps them to learn. And if it doesn't help them to learn, well, that's kind of on them. I'm not their babysitter. But we do need to say, okay, well, if it is a situation where the jerk in the back of the class who is watching YouTube videos instead of paying attention in class, if that starts to bother other students, and we monitor that, and we say, oh, well, you know, uh, Professor Giles has this high-minded idea that all students should be allowed to do what they want, and have freedom in that way. But we found that allowing students to have that freedom is actually detrimental, all things considered. Well, then I need to learn 
that I made the wrong decision then. And if there's enough evidence that shows that, no, my decision to let laptops in the classroom is a bad thing, then I need to change. And we all need to do that. We need to constantly be looking. Not to, it's not a situation where, well, I made a decision, we're done. I don't need to pay attention anymore. We need to continually monitor and learn from the decisions that we make. Ethical decisions go wrong. We are not perfect beings. We will always make some mistakes. We will make some wrong ethical decisions. Most of the time it's because we didn't see a consequence. We didn't anticipate something that, that could happen and now has happened and we've unintentionally made things worse or it was a simply a less good decision than another possibility. And I mentioned earlier about uh, not making a decision simply because, well, here's a possible solution, I'll just apply it. If we oversimplify things, if we don't look at alternatives, if we don't think things through, we make simplistic decisions and simple decisions are usually wrong. That's the easy way out and that's just bad. And finally, you have to consider the professional role the decision maker occupies. Are you making a decision on behalf of yourself, of a team, of a branch, of a whole corporation? All of that affects the decisions that you make. Who you are in the system, in the machine, in the network should affect how the decisions that you make. Who are you responsive to? Who are you responsible for? And in our decision point this week, this question of what do you tell the person who asks you, am I about to lose my job? Well, who are you responsible to? This person who's asking you this question is clearly a, a stakeholder because she is going to be affected by the decision that you make. So you are responsible for her or him. So these are the things that you need to think about. What are your responsibilities? What ethical duties do you have to other people? And how do you apply these duties and all the other things that we've talked about in terms of making a correct ethical decision?